I'm so glad you share with me how often you update your homepage because today we're going to be talking about how to create a high converting homepage. So welcome to the webinar. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. I'm going to let you know how you can engage on the next page. Uh, you already know you off camera like I am today and you're on mute. So we would love you to put your questions in the Q&A. You can also put them in the chat. Um, they have team members who's pretty sharp about answering questions. We're going to email you the video and the slides later today or early in the morning. You'll probably get it later today. If you need the closed caption, just type on the CC button at the bottom of your screen. You'll see um, probably more sections and click on CC. We're going to ask you to fill out a survey because as I mentioned earlier, um, we want to know what webinars you'd like to have us do. So there's a two question survey that's going to pop up when you leave Zoom. If you would answer that, we greatly appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to John and Tariq. Have a great webinar. Thank you both for being here. Thanks, Ritha. So first up, we'll start with a little bit of a uh, agenda for what we're going to go through today. So we're going to introduce ourselves, obviously, uh, talk about why you're here. Um, and then understanding your audience, some of the key elements of converting a high uh, homepage. And then we'll go into that in much more depth. Uh, talk about some of the design principles, some mistakes to avoid, um, tools and resources that you can use, uh, measuring success. Also, we have some case studies to talk about. Uh, and then at the end, we do have a Q&A and a conclusion. Um, and we do want you guys to stick around to the end because we do have a uh, promotion going on for website services that we offer um, that is available only for people who attend the webinar today. So you wanna stick around for that. Um, so to get started uh, with introductions, my name is John. I am a web project manager here at TAP. Um, I've worked on many a nonprofit website and many other ones. Um, I work on the back end with all of our different resources, making sure that um, things flow from the beginning to the end of a project. Um, and then also today I've got with me Tarek. He is um, a web design and conversion specialist. He is uh, one of our developers and funnel experts and also our AI uh, engineer. Um, the jury is still out if Tarek himself might be AI. We are still not sure, but uh, we're super excited for you guys to be here today. Um, and a little bit about us. So who TAP is, we are a full service digital marketing agency that has partnered with TechSoup for over eight years. Um, over these years, we've provided vast amounts of marketing thought leadership and expertise, not only to TechSoup, but thousands of their members. Uh, we work with um, in a multitude of fields, but we have a strong focus in the realm of nonprofits. And we appreciate you guys joining us today. And we hope we can provide you guys uh, with some insights on uh, what your homepage needs most. So outside of nonprofits, we work with uh, businesses, including the you know, insurance, the automotive area, FinTech, the green sector, um, and many, many more. But like I said, we primarily work on nonprofits and community-driven websites, um, including government agencies as well. And then lastly, I won't spend too much time on this. Um, like Aretha said at the beginning, you guys will get this slide deck afterwards sent to you guys. So you'll be able to review this and any of the links that are involved uh, in here as well. You guys will get a chance to click on those and look at that. Um, but this is just a slide that kind of goes over um, everything that we do. So like I said, we are a full service uh, agency. So things from branding to web development to CRMs and ongoing support retainers, um, we kind of do it all. So anything that you uh, need help with your nonprofit to grow, we should be able to help you out with that. So let's uh, dive in, right? <clears throat> let's start talking about um, why homepages are so important. So why is a good homepage important? Uh, main thing, a optimized homepage is going to significantly increase your donation rates. Um, you know, with clear, thought out, concise messaging and a streamlined donation process, you can boost your donation goals. Um, so this includes having simple, easy to navigate forms, um, keeping everything streamlined, not overwhelming. The longer it takes somebody to fill out a form, the less they're going to want to do it, right? Um, so keeping those concise and succinct is super important. Um, also, by having your website and your homepage be user-friendly and visually appealing, so having great high-quality images on it, 
um, you're going to engage more people. You're going to keep them on your site for longer, which is going to help then reduce those bounce rates. So an effective homepage design can lower the bounce rates, which is then in going to encourage people to stay on your site, to start to explore your site, to click on interior pages and uh, get further along with it, guys. Some other things, uh, you wanna make sure that your website is not just good for uh, desktop, but also for mobile or tablet or any device size. Um, you know, these days people use a multitude of different types of screen sizes. So you wanna make sure that your website looks good and performs well um, on any different type of screen. Um, similar to donations, you wanna have a streamlined uh, way for uh, volunteer signups, if that's something that you're looking for. So you wanna make sure that that's easy to navigate through um, and capture those leads. Um, and then also a good website is going to help with your SEO. SEO is you know, a compilation of many different things at work. Um, it's in the code, it's in your content, it's in um, everything to do with your website. So having a well-made homepage um, is going to help you rank higher and is going to drive more organic traffic to your site. Um, so I do see some questions. So a landing page is just a significant or just a, a single one-off page. Your homepage is your actual homepage of your website itself. Um, so here we've kind of got some of the key uh, elements of high converting homepages. We're going to dive into these um, much deeper coming up. Um, but these include... Um, Sorry, I just lost my screen. There we go. Uh, the hero section, the mission statement, visual storytelling, the CTAs, social proof, uh, user-friendly navigation, mobile optimization, fast loading times, and trust indicators. So these are all different things that we're going to be going through coming up. But first place to start is you want to understand your audience, right? So we've got you know donors, volunteers, beneficiaries, and partners. Each one of these is different but they all have something in common. Um, you know, they care about your cause, right? So to connect with them, we need to understand what makes them tick, what drives them, uh, you know, what keeps them up at night, if you will. So by figuring out their psychographics and their motivations, we can tailor our homepage to speak to their language. Um, you know, we're not just throwing stuff out there and hoping it sticks. We're crafting a message that resonates, a design that inspires people, and a call to action that can't be ignored. Um, when we do this right, our homepage becomes more than just a website. It's a powerful tool that builds you know, the relationships, drives support, and helps you guys make a real difference in whatever you're trying to do. Um, and now I'm going to hand it over to Tarek. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. So before I jump into this section, uh, let me give you an idea about what, what the website is all about. I, I can see some comments. Uh, I'm sorry, I can see some messages on the chat box that people are talking about what is home page and landing page landing page uh, if you ask me what is landing page in one answer it will be uh, one goal at a time one offer one goal at a time so if you have something very specific let's say you have an event coming up you have a particular um, donation fundraising event coming up something like that it, uh, you can offer through a landing page you can create a funnel and then you can create user flow to convert them. And the website is something I call a digital storefront, something that can be accessible to anyone 24 by seven globally. So it's very important because all the traffic that you have, all the people, they need to visit in one place, the digital storefront, uh, you can say digital headquarter, whatever it is, the website is the thing. Now, the question here is like, uh, why we need a website. You, you can use a website for, let's say, uh, storytelling, uh, sharing your success stories for engagement, visibility, credibility, and also fundraising, uh, tons of stuff. So website is equally important to give your first impression, to build credibility, uh, to engage with people, and then later uh, you can utilize the traffic and convert them into particular stuff, a particular goal, a particular achievement. So let's jump into uh, the homepage as the whole event, uh, sorry, whole webinar is all about the homepage. I'm gonna talk about the specifically homepage. Yes, there's a difference between a high converting homepage and landing page, 
Uh, let's talk about the home page. The website, the first page we see is called home page, and it's very, very, very important. And if you ask me which part is very important of a home page, I'll say the hero section. Now, what is hero section? The section you see underneath a navigation, the first section, uh, whenever you visit a website, you see uh, the section, you see the page that gives you a first impression. You know, the first impression matter in three to five seconds, uh, you need to, uh, the website needs to tell you what they, who they are. It needs to be connected with you so that they can um, visit the page, stay in the website and do the, take the action. So in order to have a hero section, there's a couple of terms out there is like a couple of elements we can say uh, we need to focus. One of the thing will be the high quality image and video. Yeah. This is very important. Most of the people made mistakes. I, I see tons of clients while, while I was working on this industry. I see tons of clients came up with illustration, came up with the stock images. Yeah, you can use stock images, but it needs to be something real. Something needs to be uh, connected, emotionally connected with the people. Also, some example. On the left-hand side, you can see a couple of examples we have. And um, all of them, or most of them, you can see, can easily give you an idea, give you an impression about what the site all about. If you are selling food, uh, you should not mention car. The picture needs to be uh, a food or let's say Apple, not a Tesla or not a car. So it needs to be related. If, you're, if your organization is doing these things A, the images needs to be A along with real people that can connect emotionally. So that's the most crucial and important part. Then second part is the headline. Headline is very important. It's not something welcome to this, welcome here, welcome there. No, it needs to be important. Uh, the headline needs to tell everything all about the site. You, you can reply, oh, this is not possible in replying, uh, giving, uh, telling them in one sentence. Yeah, that's why we have sub headline, the supporting headline. The headline will act like a hook, hook the visitor. And then we use some headline to give additional information. We need to follow them a procedure. Like they see the image. Wow, that's beautiful. Then they see the headline. Okay, I, I get an idea. Then they read the sub headline to get additional information. And then now the most important part. Yes, all of the elements are important. But uh, if you tell me which one will uh, make or take, help people to take action, which one is the button? The crucial part, if your button is not working, people can donate, people can si uh, sign up for a volunteer, people can do people will not able to learn more. So a prominent primary call to action button is very important. And I'm going to talk about this on the next slide. Okay, now the hero section, uh, there's a couple of uh, layout and design principle out there. Let's talk about some layout strategies. And uh, one of them is golden ratio. I'm pretty sure um, you heard about this, the golden ratio. If you are not, a golden ratio is a special number that helps uh, things look balanced and beautiful. Uh, it's about like exactly 1.618 and 1.618. I know this, these are mathematical terms. I don't want to uh, make you feel uh, like bored about, who, I know most of the people don't like to uh, hear about the math. That's fine. I just want to give an idea. It's like, Imagine you have a rectangle and rectangle has four sides and uh, both parallel sides are same. So let's say the longer side and the shorter side, if you divide longer side by shorter side, you will get a number. And if it's 1.618, it will be a golden ratio. Now, I, I know these things getting complicated. You are thinking, oh, what I'm reading about is something, uh, if I give you this number, if you divide it by something, uh, bigger side to shorter side, and the number become 1.618, you, you, you can think about it's a golden ratio. It's been used on pyramid, it's been used on seashell, art, design, everywhere, this ratio. Whatever you use this, it will act like a uh, charm, what I can say. It's used, uh, used in uh, buildings, uh, most architecture use that, uh, pictures, even website. We also try to use golden ratio because there's the art of nature, art, uh, you can also define this 1.618 as a phi, the mathematical term. And if you want to learn more about this, uh, you can learn it from Wikipedia. I already added a uh, um, source, I think, 
on image you can take a look on that the first top left one image is the golden ratio the c that looks like seashell actually the seashells is actually a golden ratio even my ears the inner part is actually golden ratio so this is really interesting why don't we apply this in web design website yeah we try to utilize this ratio in um website as much as possible then we have rule of third i'm pretty sure uh you see this rule of third the grid style the three grid uh horizontally and vertically if you see on the low, uh, top right top right image there's two image comparable i know this looks maybe really small uh is because of the way i have to put everything in a single image i'm sorry for that but uh you'll get this slide and you can also take a look on the google uh to wikipedia to learn more about this so if you see the rule of third is something uh that give a visual harmony of an image most of the photographer use this uh, to uh, get a really good photo and then we have f pattern and c pattern this also really important align headlines and city according to nature natural scanning behaviors so uh, the second image the middle image you can see the three image with hotspot uh, thanks uh, Nelson Norman group the NN group for giving permission to share this here I also addressed the link uh, uh, bottom down of the image and um, if you if you read the article uh, you can get an idea about how inter how people interact with uh, content they see on the screen so if you have let's say only text content I'll recommend to use F pattern okay uh, so you will, you can only see the middle image here uh, that three images actually following the F pattern and uh, if you have something let's say not text heavy like the hero section that th the bottom image you, you see the bottom one it has Z pattern and that image and the hero section are designed by me actually so I designed that following this structure so if you have too much text you can follow the F pattern like article stuff like that and if you have if you follow a website uh, where you're creating hero section you can follow the z pattern it depends on scenario and then we have also two column design is similar to like a uh, left side you have text right side you have uh, image something like this so that's pretty simple stuff and then let's go to the next slide where you're going to talk about the design principle design tips now after this uh slide you can think about your uh, designer at least junior <laughs> I'm joking. So uh, let me give you a design tips. Uh, when we think about a good website, good design, it needs to have a couple of uh, key elements in it. And one of them will be the contrast and color theory. If you look at bottom, the green apple and the red apple, I'm pretty sure the red apple took your attention really well. It's because of contrast. The contrast is very very important i see tons of website who has image in the background but the text are not visible we can't even see the text we have to use glasses glasses to find the buttons this is not accessible or really good experience for the user so the button needs to be stand out i i said it before and i'll say it now and i'll say it later as well the button are the most crucial part that lead user to take action. So the contrast is important. And that's why you see on the middle image, the UNICEF, that, that was actually taken from the UNICEF website. Thanks, uh, UNICEF, to give permission to use that. So UNICEF, if you see uh, their image, it looks uh, like really emotionally appealing. And the text and the button, you can see, I can easily read or get, the button already took my attention, the donate button. I know most of the people can't even see this properly because of the uh, sl uh, small screen size, uh, but you will get that slide and you can get an idea. So contrast is important. Like the red apple in green apple stand out properly. That's the good contrast. And then we have white space. So p proper use of white space improves compensation by 20% and user satisfaction. This is actually uh, statistics actually proven statistics, the 20% increase if you use utilize the uh, 
white space properly. White space is like, I see uh, tons of websites congested with too much information and it's not good for eye. So you have to have a visual hierarchy, typography hierarchy and white space so that it balance the whole design. It needs to be, uh, the design needs to have some breath in, right? People make the design like a flyer. No, it's not a flyer brochure. It's a website, it needs to have breath. People need to take breath and the design also. So white space, typography hierarchy are also equally important. Let's go to the next slide. The mission statement and visual storytelling. I already talked about the visual storytelling. I know tons of people, I already heard Ada talking about people don't like Wix. <laughs> the first example of this image is actually Wix. By the way, it doesn't matter if you like it or not. Uh, I actually like the hero section. It's because uh, if you see in a visual, a really attractive, a really, it gives me a really good impression. Also the headline and the button. Button easily stand out. And the text, the leader in website creation. Mm, yeah, it can be uh, debatable, right? We can debate with the uh, headline, but that's fine. But the way they position themselves is really good. Uh, let's talk about the mission statement. Uh, Underneath the hero section, the most important part, the second section will be the uh, mission statement. And it needs to be aligned and it needs to be, uh, it needs to put in properly so that people can easily get an idea about the, your mission, your vision and everything. So I show, I give a couple of examples here you can see on the right, bottom right. Uh, two example uh, where you can, we can see the mission and the values and also the middle one, uh, it has really good graphics. Also, it has mission statement with the button so people can learn more about this. I can see tons of chat. I'm sorry, I can't actually read that or I'll have uh, out of time. I, I may not uh, complete the whole slide. So I have to go fast. I'm sorry for that. The good thing here is like we have a bonus for you. And I'll reveal it end of this webinar. Okay, so the next slide is uh call to action. I think John is gonna talk about this. Sure, yeah. Thanks, Dirk. So uh, I saw somebody in the chat ask what a CTA was. So that is a call to action. We also call them CTA. And this is gonna be your main source of direction for your visitors. You want this to be simple and direct and to stand out. So on here, we've got some examples of um, normal CTAs. Um, you know, these can include donate now, which is obviously a very clear and direct call to action for those ready to contribute to you guys. Um, join us, which is going to encourage, you know, visitors to become involved or volunteer or become members. Uh, learn more, something where visitors then can delve further into your organizations um, and gather more information on you. Um, definitely super important for your site for these to stand out. Um, like uh, Tarek was saying, you want... Um, good contrast on these. So contrasting colors, usually um, I would suggest your CTA. It's often a great idea if you have a color palette to choose one uh, color to be your CTA color. So this stands out against everything else. So every time a user sees this one color, they know that that is um, calling for them to do something, something actionable for them. Um, also, again, you want to use action-oriented language. So you want to use something strong and persuasive, um, but that's short and simple. That's going to catch somebody's eye without it being too long. Um, and then you want to think about that st strategic placement of them as well. So it's always a good idea to have one above the fold. And when I say above the fold, I mean when somebody lands on your site, depending on uh, the screen size, they see this button right away, right as soon as they land on your site. Um, also, then, as they scroll down, you want to make sure that these are placed strategically uh, with whatever content makes sense for them. So if you have a section about volunteering, you want to make sure that you have a strong CTA that is labeled um, in the volunteer area, right? Uh, up next, then, we've got social uh, social proof. So we know how the world works today. Obviously, trust is a very valuable commodity. You know, when it comes to online giving and potential donors, they want to know uh, that they're Contributions will be used effectively. Um, also, that their personal information is going to be protected. Um, so that's where social proof and trust indicators can come into play. Um, so by showcasing a positive thing, you can encourage visitors to take action. Um, some of these 
can include things like testimonials where you share positive experiences from you know satisfied donors or volunteers or beneficiaries. Um, also like a beneficiary story, which is going to highlight, you know, the impact of your work through the personal stories or anecdotes that you may have. Um, also sharing your partner logos. So displaying the logos of reputable organizations that you collaborate with to kind of build that credibility. Um, we've also got trust indicators. So we got things like security badges. You know, you can showcase the badges or seals to indicate that your website is secure and protects the user's data. Um, We've also got certifications that you can display um, or any awards that demonstrate, you know, your guys' credibility and expertise in whatever area you might work in, um, as well as trans transparency reports. So share reports or other uh, transparency documents to build that trust and accountability for whatever you might be working on. Um, so, you know, by incorporating all of these different types of indicators into your homepage, you can give the visitors um, assurance that you are trustworthy and credible um, and that that is going to increase the likelihood of them taking action on your site, whether that be to join as a volunteer or a member or uh, donations. And then up next, we've got um, user-friendly nav and optimization. So almost everyone uses their phone these days to quickly look at the internet, which is why having you know a clear mobile-friendly website is so important. Um, that first impression of how your site looks on any device is going to lead your uh, visitors to credibility instantly. Um, so also having a very clear navigation is also super important. You want this to be intuitive. So you want people to kind of be able to figure out where they need to go based on this top level nav that you have going on. Um, and you can have sub menus that drop down, drop down menus um, afterwards, but you want to make sure that that's organized in a way that makes sense to the vast majority of users that are going to be coming to your site. Um, you know, if you have an about on your top level of your nav, it probably makes sense that maybe one of the drop downs is team, right? Um, or our mission statement, things like that. Um, so you wanna make sure those categories are logically defined. Also, like I said, mobile optimization is super important these days. Um, so you wanna make sure that your design is responsive so that it scales from a large uh, PC screen all the way down to a mobile device. Um, you want to make sure that you have the touch-friendly elements, so like your buttons and your links and everything are large enough to be able to be clicked on by a user with their finger on the phone. And also you want to make sure that you have fast loading times. You know, optimize your website images and code to ensure that everything's going to load quickly on all devices, um, which does then lead me over to fast loading times. Um, you know, unfortunately, we do live in a very impatient world. Um, if your website doesn't load within a few seconds, there's a high chance a visitor will actually abandon it. Um, you know, studies have shown that a delay of even one second can lead to a 7% decrease in conversions. So you want to make sure that your website is also optimized. Um, ways to do this include things like compressing your images, so reducing the file size of your images. Um, without compromising that quality. Um, there's a lot of different plugins that you can utilize to do this. Um, you want to make sure you streamline your code. So minimize any of that unnecessary code and optimize you know, the structure of your website so it uh, responds well across all devices. Um, you want to use performance testing tools. Utilize you know, like Google PageSpeed. Um, PageSpeed Insights is a great uh, free tool to use uh, that you can identify areas of improvement and measure your website's loading speeds. Um, you know, and the impact of this is you're going to have reduced bounce rates. So like I said, when people are able to uh, get to your site faster and it loads quickly, they're they're going to more, they're more likely to stay on this site. Um, also, it's going to give them an enhanced user experience. Um, you know, things are going to run a lot smoother for them. So they're going to be happier overall. Um, so now up next, I'm going to hand it back over to Tarek. Thank you, John, again. Design principle specific to nonprofits. So, nonprofit industry is not same as other industry. It has a couple of uh, similarities and differentiable things with other industry. Let's talk about. Let's say you have tons of information, and you, you want to do. Uh, you want to make a high converting homepage. So then you need to emotionally appeal versus information. You can't provide too much information, but uh, provide as much as information are uh, important or essential 
and craft it with storytelling. This is very important. I know uh, for newbies, it will be hard. That's why we are, we are the expert here, or you can do Google, start learning. But uh, emotional appeal versus information, I, if you sum up, balance storytelling with essential info. Then we have consistent branding. Yeah, this is also important. Like uh, you have colors, font, images. It, these stuff needs to be aligned with the brand. A brand is a crucial part of uh, your business, your non-profit, whatever it is, right? So the, it needs to be consistent all over the website. You, I, I see a tons of website has different font size, different images, different colors. Why? And this makes it really uh, hard to someone to read, someone to navigate, and sometimes the user forgot why they're here. And the other thing, accessibility. This one, I think, needs to be also prioritized for all nonprofit out there. Uh, accessibility include the color contrast, navigations, and the image uh, alter text are also important so that anyone can visit the website and can learn the essential or necessary information. And then we have, again, the white space utilization, prevent cluttering, and highlight the key elements are necessary. So it's important. Four things, it needs to be balanced storytelling, needs to be uh, emotionally connected, consistent branding, accessibility, and white space utilization. On the next slide, uh, let me share a couple of uh, mistakes people um, do. And uh, sorry to say, there's a brand out there named Jesse Penny. And if you want to see, uh, so if you want to see their website, this, I know this is not the same version as of today. I don't think they have improved a lot. But uh, this one, this screenshot is taken back in 2016. And if you want to see the same, uh, or if you want to see any website previous version, how they are before, you can go to Internet Archive uh, Wayback Machine. I already, I added the link on bottom of the image here you can see, Web Archive, and you can visit and you can paste any link from internet and paste it and see the previous version before. If you see um, Jesse Penny website, comment down what's your first impression. Let's see. On the left-hand side image I was talking about. Chart, wow. <laughs> yeah, clutter. Text heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too many buttons. Yeah, correct. Color contrast. No clear CTA. Too many things to click. Exactly. Overwhelming. Correct. So I think most of the people know and uh, how, how a website should look like and what are the mistakes they're making. So common mistakes to avoid, overloading with information. Too much information can kill or overwhelm the visitor. Use as much as information in a way so that people can also like to read, also uh, like to visit. Then we have weak or hidden call to action. You can see tons of button. I even forget why I came here. Uh, where I should click. Uh? So tons of buttons and neglecting mobile user. I can assume like what will be in mobile version. Then I'm pretty sure they're ignoring analytics before. I don't know currently. They improve a little bit. But uh, if you understand what, what they're saying uh, based on their um, the screenshot, based on website design, is not for everyone. It's for uh, like people who want to buy anything from those sites. So they have different objective for their homepage, but uh, when it comes to nonprofit, it can be like this. It can be converting for Jesse Penny, but uh, uh, because their audience or visitors may came for tons of stuff and they'll find what they're looking for. But for nonprofit, it can be like this. It needs to be clear, emotionally connected, and easy to navigate and powerful call to action. On the next slide, I'm gonna share some tools. So there, these are a couple of tools. Yes, a couple of tools using uh, web design and designing high converting homepage. So design tools like Figma, we, I use often. 
And then we use uh, image and video resources like Unsplash, Pexels, and Canva. Canva is also really good. Uh, if you are in my AI, previous AI webinar before, I talk about Canva AI because it's something uh, really easy for someone who are not technical person. They can utilize Canva for anything. And then we have uh, optimization tools like TinyPNG, Google Page, page Speed Insight. TinyPNG can compress your image from five megabyte to five, uh, 500 kilobyte or maybe less. Accessibility, uh, you can use uh, X or contrast checker tool to see how accessible is the web website. There's some Chrome extension out there. You can install and check the website accessibility. Now prototyping and testing, this is important. Specifically the Hotjar. Hotjar is still something I use often or Microsoft Clarity to see uh, the website heat map because Hotjar or Microsoft Clarity give you the recordings of each visitor and tell you where people are clicking, uh, from which part people are living. So based on the data, we make decision, we change or update or make the page better. I'll share on the next slide maybe. So let's talk about uh, how we can measure success. It's important. Like let's say, how I can say your website is not good. I can, uh, maybe I am a designer and I don't, uh, I have, I don't like his design. I can say the design is bad. The design, the definition of, in my perspective, the definition of the good web design will be that convert. Those websites convert. Let's say you have a website that convert really well. Also, this is a good design. Not something looks really beautiful, but not converting. How we can measure this? Through the conversion rate. There's a couple of terms out there. Uh, let's talk about the conversion rate. Conversion rate is percentage of visitor taking desired action. Let's say our main goal of a website, or let's say I have a, goal, a website and I want to take more donations. So I created the homepage in a way so that whenever people visit, uh, I want... I um, encourage visitor to make donations. So let's say 1,000 people visited uh, or 100 people visited and only six people donated, then the conversion rate will be 6%. So I convert only 6% people. It can be 3%, 1%. So the more you have, the better page you have. And how you can do this? You have to use tools like Hotjar, Clarity, and other tools to make sure uh, to make it optimized as much as possible. Do a split testing, like my mentor Russell Brunson says, uh, every testing, every split testing is a key strategy to optimize conversion rate. Like a, what is a, a B testing is actually you have two version or maybe multiple version. And uh, the difference between two version, you can't actually do tons of uh, uh, variation. Uh, like let's say, uh, I want to do A-B testing. The first version has a uh, button in green color and the V version has button in red color. So two small changes or two small difference and I send traffic, 100 visitors. Out of 100 visitors, I send 50% or 50 people to A version and 50 people to V version. Then I can measure the conversion rate, how, how many people convert. If the V version convert more, I'll stick with V version and I'll then uh, with the V version, I'll do more split testing. That way, slow by slow, you can find the best version possible for your uh, homepage, for your landing page, whatever it is. That's the best way to do. You should know your bounce rate, how many people, uh, how many visitors living after one page. That's called bounce rate. Is it too high? You have to work on your website. Average session duration, how many people uh, spending time on your website. And user flow analysis, how you are flowing, or we can say funnel, how how good your funnel is, how how the structure was. Like, let's say people click on uh, donate now, which steps they have, how many steps they have to take to complete that action. So the flow needs to be really good and well-placed. So in sum, uh, if, if we say uh, conversion rate and all, all other things, these are very important for a website uh, to make your website works really good. So... Uh, jo John is going to talk about some case study of a couple of really good examples, and then I'll talk about them more. All right. That's good. Yeah. So let's hop into a couple of case studies that we have going on. So up first, we've got Charity Water. So as we take a look at this, um, 
this is how you're going to see their site as soon as you land on it. Um, from the moment you land there, their mission is crystal clear. Their tagline of 100% of your gifts fund clean and safe drinking water. This is, you know, this succinctly explains their purpose. There's no jargon or ambiguity. It's just a straightforward statement um, that then is supported further by the subheading below it for more details. Um, you've also got um, impactful visuals. So, you know, the image here um, is clean. It's using a high quality photo that immediately captures your attention. It shows, you know, who they do this work for and also relates back to the heading statement itself. Um, so it combines, you know, factual information about the mission with emotionally charged visuals. And this is going to create that connection that often motivates users to continue on your site or engage with you guys. Um, also, another important thing about this is the strong use of CTAs. So they have very well-defined CTAs. The donation form is right here up at the top in the hero section, right when you land. Um, you know, it has the option of give once or monthly. The form is small. Um, and simple. So that's going to get people to actually use it. Um, you know, the button color also contrasts with the background image itself. Um, it's standing out against everything else. And that's the only area that, you know, that this yellow means something to click on. Um, other kind of things to note, um, we can't see here in the screenshot, but they also do have a strong uh, use of social proof um, on their homepage, as well as this site is greatly mobile for mobile optimization. Um, the hero section and the CTA with the form lays out great on a phone as well. So when you land on it on any device, you're going to be able to access that easily. And then up next, we've got the World Wildlife Fund. Um, obviously, they're going to use, um, they're more heavily with imagery, right? So um, high resolution photographs of you know, endangered species and landscapes, et cetera. Um, this is done to invoke that sense of awe and urgency, kind of showing that nature needs protection, which is what their entire thing is about. Um, they also do utilize multiple CTAs all across their site. Um, they're strategically placed throughout the hero section and the homepage um, with clear call to actions. So we see options like donate now and adopt an animal learn more, take action. This variety caters to a wide different, a wide amount of visitors for their motivations, for whatever it might be, allowing them to engage with uh, the World Wildlife Fund in multiple different ways. Um, also, they do social proof again. So, you know, they're building their credibility by incorporating various uh, elements of social proof of showing, you know, who they work with, their partners, um, displaying those logos, um, doing impact statistics, so showcasing the number of you know species protected or areas of habitat conserved to provide that tangible evidence of their success. Um, and also then highlighting you know major um, donors or corporations, and that's going to demonstrate uh, their reach and their impact. Um, so this one's like a great example of. Uh, emotional appeal using the visuals with the animals and people working together to drive the visitors to action. Um, and it's also a super user-friendly navigation. As you can see at the top, their navigation is small and concise, uh, allowing users to dig into where they want to go later on. Um, and now I will hand it back over to Tarek, who's got another uh, case study. Direct relief. Okay. So it's the same thing uh, with the most of the good Nonprofit out there, the bigger one, uh, they try to follow the good imagery that emotionally connect that can explain it within three seconds who they are, what they are all about. So that's the main objective. You can, uh, you can take the three second formula, fifteen second formula. If you can explain your visitor, who are you in, within three to five second, I can assure you, you got the visitor or you get a good bounce rate. <laughs> so these same things. Um, Direct relief did like uh, I like a couple of things of them like their transparent reporting, easy donation process, and real time impact metrics. These things are really important, and I I think uh, there's tons of other nonprofit out there. We we don't have enough time today actually, or I'll be happy to add them. But if you do some research, you'll find out like uh, why they are doing this. There's a reason. 
they use uh, reviews, they use social proof to build the credibility and trust. If people trust your organization, they are gonna donate. If not, they are not gonna take any action. So for that, most of the nonprofit use uh, social proof, uh, make the donation process really easy, uh, make it transparent reporting and real-time impact, how many impact you're making. I'm gonna show you an example through screen sharing later, but just to give an idea. On the next slide, uh, let me give an, a comparative analysis on nonprofit process and e-commerce. E-commerce is completely talking about like the money, right? The sales. This, 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 these are the main objective. For a, a nonprofit, it can be different. It uh, the objective and the goal is different depending on the nonprofit. So if I say average, most of them are uh, on focused on donation or fundraising. They they try. That's the main objective. If if it is, then your uh, call to action will be donate now. Uh, where e-commerce or sorry e-commerce they have a shop now and stuff like that. Visuals where a nonprofit will be emotionally, uh, em emotional imagery where e-commerce will have product images and promotional stuff. Content strategy, it needs to be storytelling, impact metrics, a volunteer info, where e-commerce can be focused on more product showcase. A trust indicator, I already discussed about this. Uh, emotional appeal. This is important. I, I already I talk about the emotional, emotional, emotional part. Yes, you need to be connect with the visitor emotionally so that people can relate and take action. For the next slide, let's talk about some best practice for each uh, homepage section. Uh, header. Header is the most important part, like the navigation part. You see, logo, uh, navigation. These are the header. And then you need to have a prominent call to action. And then on the hero section, uh, then we have the mission statement. We have impact stories, how we can help, social proof, latest news, event and campaign and footer. The thing here is like, uh, you don't have to worry about this. I have, uh, so let, let me reveal uh, what, what I have. I'm gonna uh, give you a high converting homepage checklist with a structure and extensive resources for free. So that will be a bonus uh, I'll give away and you will find everything on that, even more of this on the uh, checklist. So let's go to the next slide where we talk about the actionable takeaways. It's like um, whatever we discuss now, let's sum up everything. The first thing, what do you have to do? So if you are building a website or building, uh, if you want to optimize your homepage, Keep in this mind, if you uh, convince your visitor at least 1% out of 100, this is actually a big number. If you increase your conversion rate 5% to 10%, it's actually a big number. Think about it in this way. If you are, uh, your conversion rate is 5% out of 1,000 people, I mean 50, and you increase it to 10%, I mean 100 people, and the number, if you think about the numbers in 1,000, 100K, millions, it's actually a big number. So 1% matters here. So in order to do that, you need to do, I call this reverse engineering. So the, the term, I didn't include it, but reverse engineering something, I try to see how they build a website. I mean, the most uh, successful one, how they build it, what are the things they do. That's why based on uh, their information, I, I research tons of stuff. I built 300 plus funnels in my whole career. So I, th these are the things I do. I uh, try to study the successful people or successful website or nonprofits homepage to analyze what they're doing. And based on the data, I create my own um, study research and create that. Then you have to create a uh, user persona. It's important. Uh, people are talking about like uh, people, some are some uh, big nonprofit are more heavily focused on donation, where other nonprofit are not. Maybe they are, they have different objective. So you need to be uh, come up with your objective. It needs to be clear what goal you want to achieve through your website. What are the objective you have? And you have to prioritize the objective. If the donation is your primary objective or goal you want to achieve, you have to make the website that can help you to take donation. Clear. So that's why you have to create user persona. You have to research your industry. 
and come up with the research data. Website is not just about uh, diving into Wix or diving into Figma or Dreamweaver and image, text, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not a website. That's why I call them a brochure, a digital brochure. That's not a website. Website is more than a website, more than a design. So you need to do proper research, come up with the data, then create the wireframe. I mean, the skeleton, we call a skeleton. And then you have to create this uh, apply design principle. Then you have to optimize it for speed and test and iterate. Keep in this mind. And a couple of things you need to tell. Uh, I, I I think I should tell. Um, if visitor loves your website, Google will love you. It's not my word. Google says, if visitor love your website, Google will help you to rank. So, also if visitor trust your website, they'll. Uh, put more donation or they'll do the action. So uh, you have to follow uh, follow a couple of stuff, a couple of elements, or you have to implement a couple of elements to achieve that. So important. So let me share my screen and show you a couple of stuff that I can't actually talk. So that's a golden ratio. If you uh, do Google, if you want to learn more, if you are a math freak like me, I like math and uh, science. So you can do Google and learn more about the uh, golden ratio. And here you can see how golden ratio came up, Fibonacci series, stuff like that. Here's the golden ratio, mathematical stuff. And what's been used like pyramid is actually golden ratio. Let's talk about the F and Z pattern. So the F pattern uh, based on the NN group, Nathan Normal group. And I did, I do actually follow them and see their research paper. They come up with like people, uh, like with habit text, people try to follow in F pattern. So we have to use this uh, data when we create it. And the thing is conversion.com. Conversion.com is actually helping big brands, a big organization to help them make conversion. See here, increase UNICEF average one of donation amount by more than 50%. There's actually a big number. I mean, in conversion history, or maybe for the nonprofit, the only changes they made is it's really interesting. If you see that part, UNICEF has their stuff really well. If you see what they added, they added seventy nine percent. We are seventy nine percent toward our weekly target. Your support can help us smash it by adding this before the payment option. They increase 50% conversion rate where people, let's say people convert 1% before, now people are converting 51% more. Or let's say, so, sorry, or, or, or let's say people are converting 10%, uh, now 50% increase, that means 15%. So that's really interesting if you see how, uh, if, if you read that whole case study, they have tons of case study and conversion.com. And you can read that and see 51% increase in average on of donation sites. Something we can also implement. If it's a UNICEF website, they uh, most of them try to follow, uh, like uh, try to connect emotionally, right? You see tons of donation website try to use like each month your 14 pound could help product from polio. So like the visitor are not donating, just not doing it. They, they can see how much impact they can make with that amount. Very important. And by doing this, you can see uh, it's already tested and um, worked data. And another thing, uh, let me share with like Wayback Machine. The, that's the one I was talking about. If you go, you can go here and uh, paste any website link and see their previous um, screenshot. And then we have Hotjar that was actually talking about like seeing hot maps, uh, so heat maps like this, you can see uh, what is happening on your website. You can have the recordings of each uh, visitor. Like uh, Hotja has some pricing involved. It's quite expensive for most of the people. So there's a free version out there called Microsoft Clarity, where you can see what is happening. So you can also see the recordings of each of them by going into recordings part, like here. You click on that and you can see each visitor, what they're doing on your website. You can see the recordings. You can see what is happening on your website, where people are clicking, where they're looking. 
I mean, these are the data is important so you can analyze if you know, what is happening on your website. It's not Google Analytics. It's more than analytics. And then uh, the ebook I was talking, uh, the checklist I was talking about, high converting homepage checklist for nonprofits. Uh, you'll get it for free end of this webinar. So, mm -hmm. what are the things you have to have in a website? Will be here. There's more information like I, I talk about like conversion structure formula, how you can create your structure. Uh, so that you can um, make it more um, effective. And then we have additional resources and stuff like that. So pretty much we have, uh, I try to add on that so that um, it also explain you what a high converting homepage is. I also help you to create or craft one. And they'll get the link for that coming up shortly, right? Um, so to wrap it up, we'll kind of just quickly go over some of our uh, services that we provide for you guys. Um, so up first is our growth-driven custom website development. This is um, a full-scale website uh, service that we have for development and integration. So this is done with our three-phase growth-driven methodology. Uh, we'll work with you to develop a strategy and build a completely custom uh, WordPress site um, and optimize it for all of your long-term goals. This is going to be perfect for um, somebody who needs a new CMS or wants to redesign their WordPress website that they currently have, um, or something that they require um, system integrations as well. Um, and if you remember at the very beginning of this, I did say that we were running a promo for uh, people who have just attended this webinar. So this is for a very limited time only. Um, uh, we're offering our templated starter website development um, for starting at $5,000. This is a much more streamlined approach compared to what I just previously talked about. You'll get a high-end tailored design and a scalable website uh, without the costs of the custom development time. Um, and to help streamline this process and make everything quicker, uh, we'll just have you provide the content, then we'll put that on the site for you. Um, this is perfect for anyone who wants to get up and running quickly or who just needs a refresh on a more straightforward site. So maybe if your site is uh, just a couple of pages in a blog and donations, something like that. Um, again, this one lasts until uh, only until Friday of this week. Um, so you can click the link here. You will be getting this uh, deck by the end of the day. Um, and you'll just want to mention in the link uh, the word special from the webinar. So then you can get this uh, great offer. We also offer maintenance services for, this is for nonprofits who already have a site, but just need help maintaining it. So something, uh, this is something that includes regular updates and security patches, uh, fixing broken links, minor content updates. I just jumped ahead. Uh, minor content updates um, and technical support and troubleshooting as well. Um, you're gonna get a dedicated account manager who um, you also get to use our help desk ticketing system, which you'll receive a response uh, with a timeline for your ticket within 48 hours. This also comes with no contract, so you can cancel any time. Um, and here's just our two different packages for this. Um, so you'll see our two different maintenance offers. The $899 includes everything I kind of just talked about. And then there's an upgraded premium package that includes further UI and UX and design and, design and development needs for larger, more custom requests. Uh, we mainly work just within WordPress. Um, we find this to be the most flexible for both us and our clients. Um, we're able to make really powerful websites with WordPress that then um, allow you to still be able to go in the back end uh, with some training and you won't have to have an extensive coding knowledge. These are just some of the uh, different tools that we use, which include Invent Calendar, WooCommerce, HubSpot, Elementor, uh, Gravity Forms, Buddy Boss. Um, uh, let me think. Donate WP, um, pretty much any large plugin that you may use on your site, we can integrate into yours. We do also offer uh, hosting and security. Um, so the hosting and security is a TechSoup subscription service for hosting your Word, Word, WordPress website. We'll keep it on a dedicated server where we do nightly backups, um, has an SSL certificate, uh, caching tools, uh, security monitoring, malware scanning, um, updates to plugins on your website, and a whole lot more. Um, so where you can find all of these different services, I'll show you, is on the TechSoup website. 
If you go to services and then the drop down for website services, if you click there, you'll see all of those. Um, all of those should be there. The only one that is not um, is the website promo, which like I said earlier, you'll get this uh, sent to you as a slide deck. So you'll be able to uh, click that link and check it out. And then I'll have Tarek just briefly uh, talk about the checklist. Already discussed about this uh, by going on this link. Uh, you can download the checklist and it has everything you need. Definitely recommend checking out. He does some great work in there. Um, we are at our time. I don't know, Aretha, if we please, please you you can answer the questions in the Q and A. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. Uh, I already answered a couple of them in Q and A. Thanks. Uh, so a couple of them are really big, and uh, most of the people are talking about like. Uh, which uh, so for the navigation part you should make your navigation as simple as possible so that uh, people can get the information and the more part can be added as sub menu or on the bottom navigation and if people saying like do we need landing page yes you can have a landing page for a particular uh, topic let's a particular campaign you can have a let the landing page don't have any uh, navigation and stuff like that. So if someone enter, they don't have any option to go back unless they exit from the website. So landing page is created for one offer at a time for a particular product and it is a part of a funnel. And the homepage also important to have all the information you have about your website is like part by part and it needs to be uh, really highly uh, focused on your objective. Yes, Glad is free for now. Uh, where is the link to download? You'll get this. Uh, uh, you, you'll get the slide through your email, right? Yeah. Thank you so much for your terrific information. Did you say you charge one twenty four dollar for testing? Are these recommended WordPress plugin for A/B testing? Uh, yes, tons of tools out there. We use cart flows to do A/B testing. A/B testing can be done manually. We can even build code to do this, or we can use any tools for that. It doesn't matter. But Hotjar, you can use there some other tool optimizely for A/B testing for WordPress is cart flows. There's some other tools out there. Is there any other question? Uh, how would you use A/B testing on a website? I can see it in emails. Not sure about website is very crucial. Like when it comes to funnel, if you visit Click Funnels, I mean Russell Brunson, I built three hundred plus funnels. So uh, A/B testing is important to make your. The more you optimize, the more you test, the better version you you'll get for your website. And mostly we actually do with creatives, like images or video or with buttons color. And these are the stuff we start. Then on the go, we do multiple testing and see the data. And we already know which stuff will work or not, but uh, we still do a bit testing so that uh, we can come up with the final verdict, like on ads people do. Any other question? How is it done implemented for web? There's tons of tool out there. You can use uh, WordPress. We use Cartflow to create funnels. And also we use Cartflow to create Two, uh, two different variation to test Abby. Uh, if you have funnel and if you have really good budget, you can also use click funnel and stuff like that. But I, I always recommend WordPress because it's cheaper and open source and free. Only you have to pay the hosting. And Cardflow, it has little bit cost. There's some free alternative out there as well. Any question? If I miss anything? Mm. Thank you covered everything. Awesome. Thank you both so much. And you Thank get you. the slides and the and the link to um all the downloads later today. Have a great day everybody. Bye-bye.